What's up, Shot Makers? It's Rob here. I am back with a special guest, one of the mans behind the scenes on the most popular basketball podcast out right now. Complex even said it themselves. Charles Dixon. Tell the people about yourself, man. I'm Charles Dixon. I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California. I'm a big Clippers fan. So all y'all people, go ahead and bring the hate. It's cool. But yeah, man, I'm just a big Clippers fan, big basketball guy. I've been playing ball since I was a young kid. Now I'm a producer. I produce my own podcast with my friend Josh called Chasing Chips. And then I'm also one of the producers on Podcast P with Paul Let's George. Go. That's what I do. And I'm also a, a wedding DJ. Hey, man, that's what's up, man. So growing up on the West Coast, was it a split between the Clippers and the Lakers or were you always rolling with the So growing up, I was an MJ fan. So big, big MJ fan, big Chicago guy. But then when Jordan retired, I felt like that was my time to kind of pick a team. It's a weird thing. I said, I was like, oh, I picked the Clippers because I wanted to choose a team because I got so many championships already being a Bulls fan and being an MJ fan. Yeah. That I was like, all right, let me try a team that could eventually get championships. And I felt like the tide was changing. I felt like the Clippers were getting mm -hmm. better at the time. I became a Clippers fan when Bobby Simmons was there, Maurice Taylor. Bobby Simmons won most improved player of the year that year. They weren't still not yeah. the greatest team in the world. But then at the end of the end, it's... I just tapped into my childhood. I was able to go to a lot more Clipper games than Laker games because obviously they yeah. were cheaper. But yeah. at the end, it's not that I don't like the Lakers. I still am very, very like a, a guy that's cool with the Lakers winning championship. I'm all LA. I'm an LA guy. I love everything LA. If For LA sure. wins, I believe we all win. But when it comes yeah. down to picking a team and picking, if they go against each other, I'm always going to ride with the Clippers. I'm always going to ride with that team. <laughs> I've had my ups and downs with, a lot of people talking like, why are you still there? Why are you a Clippers fan? Why don't you leave? <laughs> why did you become a Lakers fan? You're missing out on so much greatness. You don't miss out on <laughs> greatness if you live here. I get to see yeah, all of yeah. it all the time. I saw Kobe all the time growing up. I've been to his games. I've seen him in the streets. Let me ask you this. So how did you feel when it was rumored that he was going to the Clippers, but then he didn't go? Was you waiting for the final word that he was locked in? I knew he wasn't coming. I knew he wasn't coming. <laughs> It's just, yeah. at the time, the franchise is just wasn't a place to be. Yeah. We all know about Donald Sterling. He was a terrible owner. He was an awful owner. He yeah. didn't want to win. He didn't believe in winning at all. Um, towards the end, he kind of was forced into it because a lot more fans started speaking out. But at the end, he yeah. used to we get a really good team. Danny Manny, have an all-star year, start getting good, trade him off. Getting Bobby Simmons is one of those guys. He's not in the league anymore. Trade him off. Maurice Taylor, starting to get good. Trade him yeah. off. Ron Harper, good and good. Trade him off. Every time we were starting to get good and a player would want to have that yeah. next contract, that big contract, he trade him off because he didn't want to pay. So he's a very yeah. cheap guy on the court as an owner, but also in L.A. He was a very cheap guy. He was a slumlord. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so man. It's one of those things that when we got the new owner, Finally, I knew that was a change of the guard. Somebody actually is taking it seriously. Somebody's actually trying to win. And in the NBA, man, if your owner's digging into those pockets, paying for players or paying for equipment and facilities and things like that and make things better for the player, a championship is going to come. So I'm being patient. Yeah. He's only been an owner for five or six years. I see it as a clean slate. I don't even kind of think about the old Clippers because I'm like, all right, those are yeah. terrible times. <laughs> Whole new outlook. Yeah. In the last 10 years, the Clippers haven't had a losing season. The only team in the last 10 That's years right. not to have a losing season. So we're going the right direction. We just ain't got the chip yet. Yeah. Clippers got a real great shot, man. Mm -hmm. With Kawhi, with P, just having those two as your anchors. And like I said, they got the owner. I love Sam Cassell and the staff. Mm -hmm. The next 10 years, I definitely see a chip coming for the Clippers. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about, man. We need that positivity. Yeah. That's what we need. I was living in L.A right around 2013, 2014 years. And I had became a fan because I was a big Blake Griffin fan mm -hmm. when he was in Oklahoma. I'm a big fan of freak athletes. Mm -hmm. I, I love people getting dunked on. <laughs> right. And it, it's just something about when you just can't stop somebody physically. And they can't. just like Zion, that's my guy. Michael Jordan, even though he was a guard, he was still the same. Baron Davis made me want to go to UCLA mm -hmm. for college. Those kind of players always have drawn to me. So being in LA, man, how often were you getting down there? How often were you checking it out? I'm a one game, a summer type of guy. I go down there one day. I'll go down there, okay. spend the day down there, get down there about noon and just watch the games for the whole day. It's still good basketball being played. 
But it's a great thing. The biggest thing that I love recently was like Kyrie coming by and not announcing it, just showing up and playing. And that's what yeah. I enjoyed the most about the Drew League is that before social media and the being announced that guys were coming through, they, that some NBA guys just show up, join one of their homies' teams, or join whatever team is available at the time and play. And that's one of the greatest things about it. DeMar is a staple there. If you go one of them weekends, you're definitely going to see DeMar play. So Drew League is one of those things that gives other people opportunities that you may not get a chance to see them on the bigger stage, the NBA stage. But these yeah. guys are still killing it. Come back from overseas and they come there and show their talents and maybe get signed to the G League off of it or anything like that. But the atmosphere is great. It gives you that kind of and one type of vibe, but a lot more structured. So, you know, and while it's fun, the whole so, moves and all the extra stuff is hilarious. Great to watch. Good basketball on one end. But like this time, it's both ends. Great basketball up and down. It's, yeah. It's just if you love basketball, yeah. it's a place to be on a Saturday or a Sunday. You just go down there, show up and just watch ball all yeah. day. That's dope, man. So how did you get into producing for basketball? Pretty much my love for producing TV in general. I went to school with the undergrad at Xavier, was doing TV. I was trying to be a reporter at that time. And then I graduated and went to get my master's at Syracuse University with the emphasis in sports. So I was all sports then. I'm just learning as a reporter. Yeah. I wanted to be a reporter, wanted to be on the camera. And then something just shifted. I was like, man, I want a longevity in this and I want a little bit more structure and a lot more just kind of concrete. This is your job. Because the thing about being a reporter, sometimes even if you're really good, budget cuts come, things can get a little shaky, even though they get contracts too. But the main thing was that I wanted to solidify myself in creating the things that are going on behind the camera instead of being a person that's just on camera reciting or reporting yeah. or things like that. Even that person is also creative. A lot more behind the scenes stuff. You get a lot more things you can do, a lot more things you can handle. So that sparked my interest. So my first gig was with Fox Sports 1. And when I started there, I learned how to do all the studio show stuff. So that's where I was my main thing, okay. studio shows. And because being on a studio show, you get to learn all the sports, how to produce every sport basketball, hockey, golf, football, baseball. But my love yeah. for basketball never stopped. So that was one of the things I always read up on. I'm always focused on. I've always tried to devote all my attention to when I wasn't mm -hmm. working. So I became that person in the room that was like, hey, this is what's going on in the NBA. This is what's going on in college basketball to the guys that are up there talking. These are the arguments you can have. These are stats you can keep. These are little nuggets yeah. you can say. And then with Wave, I just saw the opportunity to be producing just basketball. I was at Fox for eight years. So the longer I got into it, I was like, man, I just want to do basketball. I don't want to cover all these other sports. I kind of don't want to be in a studio show anymore. Yeah. Two guys arguing about the same thing over and over again. And that's where I got the position at Wave. And it just has been great. I just now cover basketball, talk about basketball 24-7. Yeah. It's not even work. It's not even work anymore, for real. <laughs> Honestly, like... Yeah. I enjoy doing everything, every aspect of the job when it comes to looking up photos for a thumbnail or yeah. helping edit a video, giving producer notes, researching the B-roll that's going to go into the video and things like that. It's just all good. Even watching the games and coming back and mm -hmm. asking those questions as a producer, but also as a fan to get yeah. that inside scoop from P on a weekly basis is something that's just yeah. great. And I love it so much. Yeah. It's something that I've always wanted to do. That's why I started my own podcast because I also wanted to get my ideas and my takes out there. Basketball is something I've loved since I was a kid. And being now in a place where I work in this space, it's a blessing. I didn't realize how fun it would be um, yeah. until I started doing it. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Like every day I have to be like, man, I'm really doing this. I'm really yeah. Doing a podcast with a superstar NBA player. It's not something I take lightly at all. It's not yeah. one of those things like, oh, yeah, it's nothing. It's whatever. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I'm not going to play it cool. It's not, I'm not playing it cool on this one. This is dope. For this sure. is, this For is sure. the dopest yeah. thing I've done in my life thus far. Man, <laughs> and I love that, man, because people need to know that, right? You work hard and you take risks. You took a chance to do what you love. Mm -hmm. And then when it pays off, <laughs> you appreciate that. Yeah, man. appreciate like, it. 
got to have that gratitude to yourself. You got to be like, man, I belong at this place in my life. I belong here. I've worked hard to get here. I've been in the business for 10 years. It's not like, oh, I just fell upon this. Like, hey, I was a PA and then this walked through the door. I worked my ass off to get to where I am. And I'm just happy to be where I'm at now. Now it's just trying to take the pod and anything else that comes across my plate to the same level we've taken to this one and just keep moving, keep making progress forward. And that's what it is right now. That's so dope, man. So, Sot Makers League, we're about challenges. Real quick, man, for the people, like what kind of challenges did you face, you know, along your career path? Anything internal or external? What challenges did you face? And how did you get over it so that the people can take some inspiration from that? The biggest challenge is being heard. Being a person that's heard, you got to break down that wall where you're like, okay, I think... I have to say something now. Being heard as a black person, there's times when I was in the room and I'd be the only black person in there and something, the conversation's going on that needs the black perspective. And sometimes as black people, yeah. we feel like we're the only black person in the room, especially at work where you're like, man, I don't want to be the person to speak for it. all black people. But at those times, yeah. I had to say these things. I had to make sure like, hey, this is what I'm taking from this conversation. I don't know if we should go that direction. I don't know if we yeah. should go this direction. And being able to speak up and say what you feel and then adjust after that don't try to make something like the conversation in your head and then stop you from saying what you feel is right yeah. and then there's always those roadblocks those boys clubs you got to deal with you got to deal with the guys mm-hmm. that are just focusing on their friends that they bring into the business so you got to be able to just try to work as hard as you can to be seen you got to work as hard as you can be able to do everything like Being a jack of all trades is one of the biggest things that I always knew that I had to do. I had to be a Swiss army knife. I had to know how to edit. I had to know how to do graphics. I had to know how to talk on camera, write, all that stuff, because I need to make sure I'm separating myself from that person that brings in their friend that may not have the same thing. Just because I had two degrees did not automatically put me at the cream of the crop. No, it's not how it was going to be. Um, so you got to really put your foot forward. You got to like really challenge yourself to break down barriers and things like that to be seen and be heard and want to make sure that people hear your ideas and hear where you're coming from, because you can't always assume that your idea is not a good idea. Let it go. Let it out of the uh, ether. And yeah. then maybe hey, they don't agree with it. All right, cool. Next day, come with a new one. And that was one of the biggest things I had to keep telling myself when I was at Fox Sports 1 was like, hey, keep throwing ideas out there. Somebody's going to catch on. Somebody's going to see that spark. Somebody's going to see and hear what you're trying to do, what you're made of. And pushing that inner challenge with myself, but then the outer challenge of just everybody else trying to hear you and put it in the right way and articulate it in the right way so everybody can understand where you're coming from was one of the main yeah. challenges of it. I'm a firm believer in that myself. Don't stop yourself from taking action. Take action, especially in situations where our voices need to be heard. Let it out, say it, and then go with what the situation unfolds. And whether that be good or bad, sometimes the bad is necessary because you need to know where you stand with people around you, especially when it comes to ideas, man. You just never know. You take a chance. You put that idea out there. There's so many beautiful things out here right now because somebody took a chance and put an idea out there. You may be creating an opportunity for others or inspire somebody else to create a podcast or have the courage to have the idea. Like you said, sometimes people feel like they maybe can't work with certain people because they may think that they're just on this level that they can't be reached, they can't be touched. Mm -hmm. But when you go ahead and take that leap, sometimes you're shocked at how accessible and how actually just like you, everybody else actually is. Because that's yeah. what it is. You have to just take that chance. And that's the same thing with people that are in positions that they're in. I want to talk to the people that yeah. are in a position. You've been there for a while and you're like, man, is it time for me to take a chance and leave? That was one of the biggest things yeah. for me. I was at FS1 for eight years. Like the last few years I was fighting with, man, should I leave? Where am I going to go? Like, Do I have to stay in the network TV area? Can I go this direction? Oh, that direction. So like for me, it was like, all right, just focus on what do you want to do? What's the things that make yeah. you happy? What is the sport or what of the material or any category that makes you happy and try to get a job mm-hmm. in it and just keep pushing until you get that. And that's yeah. what happened with Wave. I just wanted to work in a basketball space and 
the opportunity came upon itself to work here at Wave. And I was like, man, I'm hoping I get this job because I really like the vibe of the people. So, so let the people know what Buckets is, what Wave is real quick for the people that don't know. Wave Sports and Entertainment is a company that host one of two of the biggest sports podcasts out with New Heights and podcast people, Paul George. We also have Buckets, where we also have another podcast that's dope, out of pocket, that's on there with Josiah, Latressa Jenkins, and Zach Schwartz. We have Jukes and Break Ankles Daily. You know, there's just so many different entities and sports that we cover. We're a sports company, so we just try to make sure we are out there in the ether. We just trying to cover in sports, giving y'all great content on social media, on TikTok, on Snapchat, on IG, on YouTube. So we're pretty much all those things. And we're just trying to make sure that we're trying to hear our takes, just trying to just put sports and entertainment together. We're trying to make sure that those teams can gel in a way where you can enjoy watching sports in different ways. And that's what we try to do. Dope. Charles, now it's time for the grand finale. Mm -hmm. You got to create your challenge. So what is the Charles Dixon challenge? that you want the Shot Makers League people to do? I want the Shot Makers people to do if challenge yourself. And I know a lot of people out there play pickup basketball, two on two, three on three, four on four, five on five. Challenge yourself to play on the worst team possible and make them win. Yo. You walk into the gym and you're like, man, these guys are okay. These guys are really good. I'm going to pick up these guys and I'm going to try my hardest to get this victory. Let's it's go. one of the things that I love doing. I love trying to walk into a gym and kind of, getting the guys that nobody because you know you see the clicks everybody has the clicks they want to pick up the guy oh i brought my four friends with me let me play with them and then you just pick up five randoms and that's what it is you just did the first pickup challenge Mm -hmm. so we got the first pickup challenge we need to see you pick up five randoms and carry the team win the game post the video to shot makers league and the person with the best pickup video is going to win 25 dollars for the shot makers league oh yeah for sure that's what i'm talking about pick up randoms come in and show up by yourself, Let's pick go. up five random dudes. Don't bring your friends and just dominate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let pe- people know what's yeah. going on. It's one of the greatest things. Let's get it. Charles Dixon, I appreciate you for being here, man. I appreciate you for coming and letting the people know. Real quick, let them know about the podcast one more time. The podcast, yeah, Chasing Chips go. podcast with myself and Josh. We were on YouTube. We're on IG. Most of everything, just type in Chasing Chips podcast. It'll pop right up. You'll see the logo of me and Josh. And then continue to listen in and watch Podcast P with Paul George. It's, it's dope podcast. If you haven't caught up with everything, definitely go back to episode one and watch the pod when it was just him, Jackie Long, and Dallas Rutherford. And just watch them as their three friends chop it up. And then when it gets later in and more episodes kind of continue, we get guests like Carl Anthony Towns and Damar. And recently we just had T-Man, Kenya Martin, and KJ Martin. So... Hit that subscribe button for that podcast, people, Paul George, and hit the subscribe button for Chase Chips Chips. podcast. Yes, sir. And you know what it is? We're going to just keep talking basketball. Show your love in the comments or show your questions in the comments and we try to address them on the show.